with the hockey that was happening in Haven. I was teaching my dad there over. So I used to stay through 34. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This morning's Mass is being said for birthday blessings for Barbara O'Brien. Reliance on the Holy Spirit produces true holiness. The Pharisees and law scholars think that they can achieve righteousness by their strict observance of Jewish law, but their self-reliance leads only to pride. In reality, as St. Paul tells us, the Holy Spirit makes us righteous by crucifying our sinful desires and bringing forth his own fruits in us if we are willing to follow him. My brothers and sisters, this morning, we celebrate this Mass also for the memorial of St. Callistus I. He was a pope and martyr. And now let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up Pope St. Callistus I to serve the Church and attend devoutly to Christ's faithful departed, strengthen us, we pray, by his witness to the faith, so that rescued from the slavery of con corruption, we may merit an incorruptible inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those, those who, who follow you, Lord, Lord will have, have the light of life. life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord, and meditates on his law day and night. Those, Those who, who follow, follow you, Lord, Lord will, will have, have the light of life. He is like a tree planted near running water, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does 
prospers. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Your blessing, Father. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. And I bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord said, Woe to you Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you scholars of the law! You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For those that follow sports, there are certain coaches over the years that use a little fire and brimstone to try to motivate their players. Vince Lombardi comes into mind for me, him of the Packers' success in the 60s. To a lesser extent, Billy Martin with the Yankees in the mid-70s. And what they did is they would really admonish the ball players to try to make them better. This is a serious fire and brimstone gospel passage from Luke. Rarely do you hear Jesus in any of these gospels from the four evangelist writers not go on a tirade, but nonetheless, you can tell by the verbiage here, he was just starting to get fed up. We know the Pharisees, by nature, tried everything they could to try to find him uh, with some sort of, you know, malformities in his preaching. And when you have lawyers asking questions, Jesus, rightfully so, had had enough. He talks here about all the laws. There, you know, even in society today, there are many, many laws. But what Jesus tried to tell the Pharisees and the lawyers here, don't worry so much about the laws. It's what's in your heart and what you do for others in society that may need you. Certain laws are definitely more difficult for those that have no money or those that are poor or those that are vanquished. He wanted people to realize that we should treat everyone as much as possible in the same light. Laws are obviously there for a reason, but Jesus is telling the lawyers and the Pharisees here, you're really missing the big picture. You know, it's easy to moan. A lot of, a lot of us, especially during this difficult time, we find things to complain about. Um, you always hear people at different parishes complaining about certain things that may be going on or things that are going on within the diocese that irk them. Jesus got tired of the moaning and the questions and he just wanted to keep people's hearts and souls centered. 
I'm reading this first reading and I'm like, whoa, you know, usually I try to preach on the gospel. And this first reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians really hits home because it talks about self-control. The works of the flesh were obvious. He named about 15 of those. But then there's a flip side. And he wanted everyone to be cognizant, not only of the laws, but spiritually and prayerfully what's in their hearts. Now, I definitely want to talk about St. Callistus this morning because his story is as interesting as just about any that I've read since I've been ordained. And obviously, I didn't preach on him last year, but when I was reading about him last night, a few things struck me. First of all, he was a peasant. He was a slave when he was growing up. And his slave master put him in charge of collecting money, which he did. All of a sudden, the money disappeared. And we don't know why. We don't know if Callistus squandered it on earthly possessions or if it was stolen. He tried to escape from the slave owner, even jumped off a boat to get away, was captured, brought back. He was then taken under his wing by a priest, and he was put in charge of the local cemetery and the catacombs. This is when he had a little bit of a conversion during that time, because that gentleman took Callistus under his wing and made him a deacon. And Callistus took painstaking care in making sure that the cemetery and the catacombs were kept meticulously. Believe it or not, some people say it was one of the first properties, that cemetery and catacombs, that the Roman church purchased, because this was early in the 200s. So Callistus worked feverishly in the capacity um, that he was given in the cemetery, and then he became, later on, um, a bishop, and then, believe it or not, a pope. He ascended relatively quickly, but he was different than others. He took at face value those that had sinned, and some of them terrible moral sins um, that were involved in immoral marriages, uh, unfaithfulness. And he preached to his rival, St. Hippolytus at the time, that anyone that goes and confesses their sins deserves a fair shake. That was what he stood. I mean, there were people that had gotten arrested for even killings. And he believed that those that went to confession and really had a solid confession straight from the heart were humbled and they showed their sorrowfulness should be forgiven. So during that time, he obviously created a lot of controversy as it turned out, he um, had been chased by a lot of the dissenters that thought he was going around kind of half-cocked. And uh, rumor has it, uh, he was martyred for the faith and actually thrown down a well. That's how he met his death. So naturally, St. Callistus obviously became the saint, um, martyred, thus the red, and it's only appropriate that he's the patron saint of cemetery workers. St. Callistus, pray for us. Together with one voice, let us offer God our prayers and petitions. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may the Holy Spirit animate each of her members with new joy and zeal for Christ's mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, may God give them the grace of humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by poverty, hopelessness, or sickness, may God give them peace and provide relief for their burdens. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community gathered here, May God preserve us in harmony and humility through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they find endless love, joy, 
and peace in God's embrace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And a special petition for whom this Mass is being offered, for birthday blessings, for Barbara O'Brien, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayers, and in your grace answer them according to your will. We ask this through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with that flame of your love through which St. Callistus I overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, St. Callistus I, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And we remember especially at this Mass for birthday blessings for Barbara O'Brien. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Callistus I, and uh, St. James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. Peace be with you, Deacon Joe. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. body. 
Christ. Amen. My dear friends, I will now pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr, St. Callistus I, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace glorifying God by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense, defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And now please join me in saying a Hail Mary for any of the victims from this accident that has occurred on 95 right up by our street here. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for being at Holy Mass this morning with Deacon Joe and I. It's a little brisk this morning. I think we're in the mid 40s, I believe, uh, but not a wind, so it's it's okay. Uh, please enjoy this day the Lord has given us. It's supposed to warm up, be a beautiful day, get out of doors, enjoy yourselves, but pray. Continue to pray every day for an end to this coronavirus. Have joy in your hearts, everyone, and join me if you can at four this afternoon for my live stream of the rosary. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Have a good day. You too.